Hello and welcome to a video tutorial from matsbits.co.uk. In this tutorial I'll show how you can create web buttons using the GIMP, the free image manipulation software. Here are some example buttons. Some people refer to these buttons as Web 2.0, some people refer to them as glass buttons, some people refer to them as Vista style buttons. Uh, to me they're just buttons done in a particular style that you may or may not choose to use in your websites. Here's some um, buttons just on their own. Here are some buttons stacked together to form a vertical menu. And here are some grey buttons that are simply put next to each other to form a horizontal menu. So here we are in the GIMP. And I'm using version 2.6.11. And what I'm going to do is create a new image. And my button is going to be 150 by 50. But you can obviously choose different dimensions if you need to. I'm going to click OK and here's our image that we're going to start with. Now then that's our background layer. I'm going to leave that as it is and what I'm going to do is create a new layer and I'm going to call this outer edge. It's the same size, it's set to transparent. I click OK. Then I'm going to click select all and then shrink by one pixel which has now selected this inner area I'm then going to invert the selection so that we are actually selecting the one pixel edge around the image and I'm going to fill with foreground colour which in this case is already set to black and then I'm going to select none that's now given us our black outer edge I'm then going to create a new layer, which I'm going to call Inner Blue. Again, same size, set to transparent, OK. I'm then going to select all, shrink by one pixel, and this area in the middle is now selected. I'm going to select the Blend tool, and in the gradient panel here over on the layers um, tool, uh, tool window I'm going to click this new gradient button that's given me a new gradient and I'm going to call that button blue I'm going to right click on the left and set the left endpoint colour to a dark blue I'm going to right click here and set the right endpoint colour to light blue and that's given us our gradient. I'm going to right click on this centre point and do split segment at midpoint which will give me something like this and I'm going to drag these white triangles in to basically put the blend into this narrow band down the centre which will give us a little bit more of the effect we're looking for. Um, that's done, I've given it a name, I'm going to click save and that's now saved that gradient down there so I can close that, it's already selected my new gradient so what I'm going to do is with the blend tool selected I'm just going to zoom in, I'm going to click at the top of the picture drag down to the bottom and make sure that line is vertical and then I'm going to let go of my left mouse button and there we go, there's the gradient. So that's the basis of our button. What I'm then going to do is create a new layer and I'm going to call this um, white edge, it doesn't really matter what you call it to be honest, it's just so you can identify the layers later on. Click OK. Then what I'm going to do is change this gradient to foreground colour to transparent, but I'm going to swap these colours because what I actually want is white to transparent. The blend tool selected, I'm going to click at the top, drag to the bottom, make sure that line's vertical and release, and there's a fade. Then I'm going to do select and shrink by one pixel to bring the selection in another, um, another one pixel. 
and then I'm simply going to clear that. So what we've done is, is created a square with a white to transparent blend and then we've just punched out the middle. So what you actually end up with is this white strip around the edge but it's white at the top and transparent at the bottom. And that's our white edge. Now we don't want that pure white so what I'm going to do is drag this opacity down to about 65% roughly something like that. I'm going to select none. Then what I'm going to do is create a new layer and I'm going to call that white edge bottom. Okay. Then I'm going to click the select tool and I'm roughly going to drag out a rectangle at the bottom. Now I want this rectangle to be one pixel high, so I'm going to adjust the height using that. And I want it to be one pixel off the bottom. So you can see here, it's one pixel from the bottom edge. And I want it to be one pixel in from the left edge. And one pixel in from the right edge, which it isn't, which it isn't quite. So I'm going to drag that out if I can do that. And there we go. So now that's selected, what I'm going to do is set the blend tool. I want to go white to transparent, but this time I want a radial gradient. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this cursor in the centre of the image. Now you'll see down here it gives you the coordinates. Now because this image is 150 pixels wide, 75 is the centre line. So I'm going to put my cursor in the selection at the 75 pixel mark. I'm going to click my left mouse button and I'm going to drag this out to about 75% along the width of the image. And then I'm going to release. And what this has done, if I do select none, has given us a white highlight in the middle that then tapers off towards the edge. So that just gives us a bit of a light line along the bottom of the button. And that's on that layer there. And again, we don't quite want it to be pure white, so I'm going to drop that to about 90% on the opacity. Next, what I'm going to do is create a new layer, um, which I can do actually just by clicking this icon. And what we're going to call this is light. Leave everything else as it is. Click OK. Then I'm going to go to the blend tool again. It's already white to transparent, so that's fine. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cursor on the 75 pixel mark. There we go. And I'm going to click left and I'm going to drag again to about 75 to 80% of the, the image um, width and let go and that will give us something like that. Now that's obviously far too intense so what I'm going to do is drop the opacity down quite a bit to about about, uh, say about 40. And there we go. Now what we need to do is add the text. So I'm going to click the text tool. And I'm going to click in the image. And I'm going to type my text into that box there and I'm going to close that. I'm then going to click the align tool up here and then click on my text. Check that the text has been selected by checking that these little squares appear in the corners. I'm then going to select image and I'm going to 
uh, horizontally align it and vertically align it and that puts it in the middle. I go back to the text tool and then what you should be able to do is adjust your font size as required. What I'm going to do is change the colour of this to an off-white because I don't quite want it pure white. So I'm going to drop it down to something like that and just quickly realign it again because changing the font size has moved it. So I'm going to realign it like this. And then I'm going to change tools and click that layer just to get rid of the selection mark there just so that we can preview the button and that's pretty much the button however what I want to do is I don't like the way that the dark blue is at the top and the light blue is at the bottom so I'm going to select this inner blue layer I'm going to click layer transform and flip vertically to put it around that way because I prefer the colors that way and what you can do now is because all your elements are now in layers you can turn them on and off and you can adjust the opacity of them so you can make various tweaks to the layers to suit your own preferences so you can increase the light glow by adjusting that layer you can change the opacity of the outer edge if you need to. One of the cool things you can do is if I create a new layer and I call this inner grey, OK, and I'm going to turn off the inner blue layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into blend and I'm going to create a new gradient I'm going to, this time make a gradient that's black and dark grey so I'm going to do the right end point and whereas before I chose a light blue I'm going to choose a light grey click OK split segment at midpoint I'm doing exactly the same as what I did with the blue layer or the blue gradient I'm going to call this inner grey save, close, there's my inner grey gradient make sure I change that back to linear and then what I'm going to do is start at the top, click and drag to the bottom and release and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to flip vertically like that. Now what that's given me is the same button but this time in grey. Now the great thing is you can now switch between those two different colours so actually using the same GIMP file you could create a whole different set of colours. So this enables you to quickly create buttons in a range of different colours without too much hassle. Similarly if I duplicate this layer here and I double click there and I change this text and close and I turn off example 1 and I select my text image align that I've now got two lots of text and by turning these layers on and off I can choose what text to show so I could have button 1 in blue or example 1 in grey. And by going to save a copy and type in a file name here to PNG you can obviously export your button in whatever format you like your actual GIMP file, what you want to do is click save as and you want to save as XCF format save because saving as XCF format which is GIMP's native format will mean it will preserve all these layers 
if you do save as PNG or JPEG or something like that, you effectively lose all these. So it's always good to keep master copy in XCF format so that you've, you can always come back to it and play with these layers as you need to. So you can basically create whatever colours, you colour gradients you want for the inner part and you can create whatever text you need to create buttons as and when you need them. And that is how easy it is to create buttons for your websites. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please remember to click the like button and to share it with your friends on your favourite social networking sites. Thank you.